Here we have a quadratic equation that we need to solve for x, um, and we're going to use the quadratic formula to solve it. When you look at the quadratic formula, the important thing to notice is that your quadratic equation must be in standard form. It has to have the x squared term first, then the x term, then the constant, and it has to be equal to zero. You can't use it if it doesn't have a zero here at the end. So in our case, we have a 20 at the end. That doesn't mean we can't solve it. It just means we have to subtract 20 from both sides first. Now that we've subtracted 20 from both sides, this is in standard form. So now we can identify our values of a, b, and c. a is always the value of the coefficient in front of the x squared term. In this case, there's really a 1 here. The b value is the coefficient of the x term, so we have a positive 8 and c is the value of the constant at the end. So since we have a minus 20, that means our c is negative 20. After you've figured out a, b, and c, you want to plug those values into the quadratic formula next. Um, the formula has a negative b here. That's really a negative 1 times the value of b. And any time you multiply a number by negative 1, it's going to change the sign. So always think of it as the opposite of b b squared is 64, and then we have minus 4 times the a value times c. Um, I usually put these in parentheses so that I don't miss a negative sign. Now this entire thing is divided by the value of 2 times a. After you've plugged your values in, you want to start doing some simplifying. Um, and I usually start with what's under the square root here first. Um, and I start with this part, the minus 4ac. Treat this 4 as a negative 4, so it's really negative 4 times 1 times negative 20. So under the square root, really, we have a 64 plus 80. 64 plus 80 is 144, and I know the square root of 144 is 12. So this whole expression under the square root, this comes out to a 12, so can, I can rewrite it now. So instead of saying plus or minus this whole part, I can just put a 12 there. And then I know 2 times 1 is just 2. Once you get to this part where you've simplified the square root, you're going to split it up into two separate answers. Um, so we're going to write it out once with a positive sign and once with a negative sign. You're going to simplify the numerators next. Negative 8 plus 12 is 4 and always divide last. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So one of our answers is 2. x equals 2. To find the second answer, you use the subtraction one. Negative 8 minus 12 is negative 20. Negative 20 divided by 2 is negative 10. So that means our second answer is negative 10. You can always check your answer with a quadratic by plugging your values back in. Um, so in this case, you'd plug in the x values and make sure they come out to 20. Um, this is a little bit easier to do because our answers came out to whole numbers. Um, so I could check it. 2 squared is 4. 8 times 2 is 16. 4 plus 16 does equal 20. Um, and it'll also work if I plug in the negative 10. Um, so with the quadratic, you usually end up with two different answers. Um, every once in a while, you get the same answer repeated twice, or sometimes there's no answer at all. Um, but in this case, our two answers are 2 and negative 10.